Serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 10. You walk in, she would walk in her room and she would be the light of the party. She was beautiful, she was friendly, she, she took care of all of us. A somber scene tonight outside a South Fargo apartment complex. Family and friends have gathered to remember Fargo murder victim Denise Anderson. Her body was found in an apartment last Thursday where a grease fire was intentionally started. Investigators say the 52-year-old did not die from smoke or flames, that her body had sustained serious trauma. Valley News Team's Melanie Palmer is with those remembering Denise. She joins us now from the vigil. Melanie? Andrea, Mike, sadness and anger surround this apartment complex here in South Fargo tonight. This is where Denise Anderson lived before she was murdered last week in North Fargo. Family and friends gathered here tonight to remember the woman she was, but also vent their frustration towards the man accused of murdering her, saying her life was taken far too soon, adding this could have all been prevented. You know, for stuff like that, that's any assault doesn't matter whether it was domestic or on anybody else. What does it matter whether somebody hits, you know, their significant other or anybody, you know, friend, whatever it is, they should <laughs> be in jail. I mean, it seems like common sense to me, but. Now that was Denise's son, Nicholas Berlin. He previously told us that the system failed his mom and that the man accused Sheldon Davis should have been behind bars a long time ago. Now Davis has been very vocal with the media, even telling us multiple times that he didn't do it. As for Denise's son, he told us tonight is also about an important message and that's stopping domestic violence, saying there needs to be more resources in the area for victims and laws need to be changed to help those victims. Mom's friends, they, you know, she, my mom was not crying out just to the police. She was crying out to her friends and stuff, too, you know. And I wish they would have told me that they knew about other stuff, too, because it's like I think that maybe if they would have stepped forward, too, to encourage her. I don't know what else could have been done, really, other than the cops part of <laughs> arresting them, you know. Now, Andrea, Mike, I've been talking to people here tonight, and they've been telling me how amazing and beautiful of a person Denise was. And as you can imagine, all the people here are truly missing her, along with all the others whose life she impacted during her life. Reporting live in South Fargo, Melanie Palmer, Valley News Live. All right, thanks, Melanie. The man accused in Anderson's death, Sheldon Davis, remains in the Cass County Jail. He was formally charged with murder and arson earlier this week. Bond was set at a million dollars. Authorities have released the name of the man killed in a rollover in the Southern Valley last night. The North Dakota Highway Patrol says 44-year-old Christopher Olson of Wapaton was thrown from his car when he left the road about three miles south of Wapaton around 7.30 last night. Troopers say the vehicle rolled in the ditch and ended up in a cornfield. They say Olson was the only one in the vehicle and was not wearing a seatbelt. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Now under new ownership, rumors are swirling that WeFest could leave Detroit Lakes. The popular country music festival has been around since 1983. Live Nation is the new owner, and Tuesday's announced sale led some to speculate a move in the future. WeFest stopped featuring many local shops when Town Square Media took over. That was back in 2014. But Randy Gravel, who sells ice, says he remains one of the few local businesses used by the festival. I think I've heard every rumor everybody else has. Uh, I still think people need to remember this is the largest outdoor camping event, so that is not easy to move or keep that claim. Gravel adds it won't be long before we'll know for sure whether the fest stays in Detroit Lakes, as tickets will likely go on sale within the next few weeks. The 79th Annual Sturgis Motorcycle Rally is continuing in the Black Hills of South Dakota. The 10-day event attracts bikers from across the country and world. Along with the annual oil wrestling, beard contest, and dozens of concerts, this year's gathering features the first annual Rusty Wallace Charity Ride. The ride raises money for the NASCAR Foundation, which helps with medical bills for children and the Special Olympics. Along with NASCAR legend Rusty Wallace, former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin took part in the ride. Mark your calendar. We now know the date that you'll be able to get one of the area's most popular donuts in South Fargo. 
Sandy's will be opening on September 10th at its new Osgood location. Sandy's has two other bakeries in town, one in West Fargo along Main and the other in downtown Fargo. An exciting addition is coming to Columbia Mall in Grand Forks very soon. Grand Forks Virtual Reality Arcade will be opening sometime in mid-August. They'll have more than 300 games to choose from. To keep up with when they'll officially be opening their doors, you can visit them on Facebook at Grand Forks Reality Arcade LLC. The fourth medical marijuana dispensary in North Dakota is expected to open Bismarck next Tuesday. For a qualifying patient or a designated caregiver to enter the display area of a dispensary, they must have their registration identification card. Over 900 registration cards have been issued to qualifying patients. It's anticipated that the next dispensary to open will be in Jamestown, followed by Devil's Lake. Fall is approaching, and that means football season is in full force from college to high school and even elementary. But safety ha hazards have some parents concerned, especially with the younger ages. Kids have the option to start tackle football as early as fourth grade. But for those who aren't quite there yet, Valley News team's Courtney Lockie has another option. Does the whole tackling thing make you nervous? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think most parents would... Um would say that every time their kid does something, they, they get nervous watching them, you know, anytime there's a, a, a possibility of getting hurt. And Chase has two young football players. And just like any mom, she wants to keep them safe. That's why she's having her youngest son stay away from tackling this year. We'll certainly um, spend a couple years in flag and, and wait and see if he's still interested in doing it and then make a decision as a family, I think, about, about whether we go into tackle football. Flag football is gaining popularity in the FM area after a league was introduced for fourth through sixth graders. When the league was introduced, Produced in 2016, there were 11 teams. Now there are 18 and about 250 kids. I want to start off with flag because, you know, I, I don't play a lot of football. Parents say the main reason they're gravitating towards flag football is because of safety. But after sixth grade, it's play tackle football or not at all. Joanna Peterson tells us her son just finished his first tackle season. I was super nervous, but then the coaches are so good about showing them how to tackle, what to do when you are tackled. Some parents we talked to believe delaying tackling can put kids at a competitive disadvantage later. But league organizer Jordan Clementson says flag football is a good starting point. I think it's more or less them still participating and learning the plays and different schemes and you know strategies for for playing the game um, you know and you're always able to, to learn those other physical aspects of it as you move up. Clementson says as kids grow they are able to handle contact better and prolonging the physical aspect is trending in many sports but he adds at the end of the day the most important thing is that kids are staying safe active and having fun. In Fargo, Courtney it. Lockie, Valley News Live. If you think flag football might be the right choice for your child, there's still a few leagues open for registration. We have more information on how you can register on our website, valleynewslive.com. A couple dozen school-age kids from across the Fargo-Moorhead area have the supplies they need to start the new school year. They, along with their parents, were able to pick up gear like backpacks, pencils, paper, even clothing and shoes. Um, first of all, as a school resource officer, part of our job or most of our job should be about relationship building. Um, so it's very humbling when you get to bring kids to an event like this and watch the smile on their face. The event was a group effort and included members of the Cass County Sheriff's Department and Fargo and West Fargo Police Departments. The event helped about 20 kids. Valley News Live 10 at 10 continues with No Wait Weather. Breezy today and definitely cooler than average for this time of the year. Typically, we see highs in the mid-80s today. We were not quite that warm. We stayed in the 70s. It's already 60 degrees out there. Uh, southwest wind now at 5 miles per hour, and it looks like it's going to be another cool overnight. 57 already in Valley City. Grand Forks, you've cooled to 59 degrees. It's 61 in Detroit Lakes and Wapiton Breckenridge at 59 degrees, while Jamestown has 60. Satellite and radar in our neck of the woods extremely quiet. When we look off to the west, eastern Montana and northern parts of Wyoming seeing shower and thunder shower activity. And this is generally making its way in our direction, and it will impact the weather on Friday for some of us. And here's what's going to change as we go through the overnight hours. The northwest wind that we had all day today, and it was pretty breezy at times, will sh uh, shift around and become southerly as we go into the morning hours. Temperatures once again will be in the 40s for a few locations, particularly, I think, northeast North Dakota and portions of northern uh, Minnesota. 
a few clouds out to the west and maybe even a shower or thunder shower as we begin the day in the James River Valley being detected by our hour by hour forecast model. As we go through the morning hours, those showers will continue their trek eastward and southward. So we'll have clouds and spotty showers of rain. We're not anticipating severe weather in our neck of the woods for our midday and temperatures will be warming because our wind direction will be from the south. It's not going to be hot, but we'll certainly see a return to uh, a few areas with 80 degree readings. Notice the afternoon rain chances dive south into portions of South Dakota. So most of the area should stay dry, but we'll leave that chance of a isolated shower, thunder shower, mainly in our southern counties for your Friday. Friday evening, well, it looks like we'll have quiet and cool conditions. Not as cool as the past couple of days, though, as we close out the work week and head into the weekend. In Fargo, it looks like uh, clear skies and a temperature near 50 degrees as you're heading out the door in the morning. Winds from the south at 5 to 15 miles per hour boost temperatures to the low 80s, about seasonal for this time of the year, will have a mix of clear skies and clouds, and those clouds will be most prevalent in the midday hours and into the afternoon and early evening for our day. Here is a look then at a photo, or your hometown forecast, rather mid-70s tomorrow, thanks to the clouds and the few showers. That will keep things a little cooler in Oaks and in Jamestown. Uh, 80 for the Grand Forks area, 74 in Detroit Lakes and Bemidji tomorrow, Babe the Blue Ox. Pretty comfortable out there for Paul Bunyan, too, in the flannel at 77. Here's a great shot. This one taken by Rick Craig. Sunset at Devil's Lake. Just a gorgeous disc of the sun there. You can upload your photos at valleynewslive.com. Here is a look at your forecast. Now, on Saturday, it does look like we'll have a chance of a few morning showers, maybe a reprieve, maybe a few afternoon ones as well. But the chance is fairly small, and the temperature will be in the mid and upper 70s here in Fargo. Sunday, it looks quieter with a very slight chance of some late showers, and we stay in the mid 70s. And look at next week, we are stapled in the 70s throughout with hit and miss sprinkles. All in all, pretty comfortable and a little below average for this time of the year. Really gorgeous out there the last like couple it. days. Yeah. yeah, it's been nice. Thank you. Uh -huh. Later on Valley News Live at 10, how much is enough when it comes to retirement savings? That story is next.